I'm Christian Cavallo, and I'm here to interview Tom Pilnick for my History 102 class. Hello, Tom. Hello. Tom is from England, but he's also a Brazilian. Mm -hmm. um, you decided to come to America for what reason? So I came for college uh, in 2012. Uh, I studied at the University of Virginia. So I was born and raised in London to Brazilian parents, which kind of makes me a double immigrant in a sense. Yeah. Um, how old were you when you came to So America? I was 18 All right. at my freshman year. Um, like in the process of immigrating here, were you like, did you get a visa through the school or was, did you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork and? Yeah. So fortunately immigrating as a student to the U.S. is easier than if I was here as a refugee or someone seeking asylum. Um, I'm on what's called an F1 student visa. Um, I think one of the biggest drawbacks to that though was that it cost a lot and it involved a lot of paperwork and working with the individual university to make sure that everything was square and straight to move here. Um, but yeah, that's how I initially came. Uh, were there any like issues that like were involved with this? Like any setbacks that prevented no. you from, yeah. or almost prevented you from coming here? Yeah, I mean, I think at the time it was pretty stable. It was 2012 and um, immigration was a little more open than it is today um, to America. Um, definitely one of the setbacks uh, that I was privileged enough to be able to work through was the cost. It's in the end several thousand dollars to apply. And also to come here as a student, you need to prove that you can pay for your education. And as we all know, education in the States is very expensive. Um, but again, fortunately for me, I didn't really experience that, although I had peers who did. Did you have to take like the citizen check, citizen test? Like no, so all? I'm not on a visa track right now that would grant me citizenship. So yeah. I've not had to take the test. Okay. That. Um, before coming to America, were you worried at all about like being here like by yourself, like with no one you really knew and stuff? Yeah, it was definitely an element of the unknown with sort of launching an entire new life and I kind of had this idea and that's been true as I've been here since 2012 that coming here would be the start of something entirely new and that my life would kind of be built around the United States and that was really scary I was leaving Brazil behind I was leaving London behind um, and that was a concern for me but um, the University of Virginia welcomed me with open arms. I had managed to meet a few people, both online and in person, at welcome events. I'm really lucky that there was a global network that was really ready to accept me. And I have some family in the United States already, and that was really important, especially for events that I think isolate a lot of international students, like Thanksgiving. Yeah. I had people I could go and see. Um, did you have any preconceived feelings or thoughts about immigration from the past at all? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's such a big and complicated topic. I mean, it's one of the biggest political issues facing the world right now. We see immigration as one of those hot button issues across elections globally. Um, you know, when I was 18, I was a lot more naive and <laughs> blind to the perils of immigration and much more just eager to start my new chapter. Yeah. Um, so those preconceived notions were really different as to how I view it now, which is sort of a deeply divisive and political issue that I'm really passionate about. Um, but at the time, I was just like gung-ho about my life and coming to America and starting fresh. So in class, we learn about the Immigration Act of 1924, which is basically like they prevented immigration from Asia and like set quotas to prevent like a certain number of immigrants from the heat eastern hemisphere do you think there are any similarities between that and what's happening with immigration today in america yeah absolutely it's fascinating to hear that the history is as um deeply set back as that um we see quotas set out in immigration policy in the united states still today with the h1b workers visa which is on a lottery and quota system um, and in the way that uh, refugees and asylum seekers are able to come to the United States, it's all based on quotas and lotteries. And um, there's even visas that are allocated to people who can invest enough money in the United States, which I consider extremely corrupt. And so um, that policy definitely lingers. Um, I mean, you're catching this conversation at a really good time because even this morning, um, there's a huge immigration fiasco regarding my F1 student visa. 
and how the COVID uh, public health crisis is kind of influencing and affecting that. Um, but for a lot of students, I think there's the peril, a lot of international students, there's the peril of having to be sent home if these schools go online. And that's another way that immigration policy can be really oppressive and difficult and challenging for students who are here and people who are here kind of tenuously. Um, our future is always in flux and that's really challenging. So yeah, that, that policy still rings true. That was going to be my next question. Did you have any fear of being sent home because of all of this or like? Constantly, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, every year there's a new challenge. When I graduated from undergrad, I had to scramble to find a job and then I moved to a master's degree and I'm moving to another master's degree in this you know, COVID-19 poses a huge challenge to that, so much so that I had to email my program advisor today and say, look, I need to take a class in person, otherwise I'm going to be deported. And it's the reality of deportation, of being unwillingly separated from the United States, which is a place I've constructed my life, lingers above me um, uh, year by year, which is a frustrating reality, and I hope immigration reform begins to take change. Were there any issues with your ancestral background that made it harder to immigrate here or was that not really? No, I mean, I'm, I'm a white man, yeah. I'm Eurocentric and, and I've had all the privileges afforded to me as an immigrant that you could possibly have. I'm someone who would be considered an expat. I'm someone who has two passports and is able to travel the world and have sort of had all those privileges. Um, I'm ancestrally Jewish and there's a long history of immigration in my family being persecuted out of Europe and going to Asia and then Brazil but um, I've only reaped the benefits from that um, difficult past so I'm, I'm lucky and privileged in that sense. That's great. All right thank you.